been very... Welcome back. Now, from its humble beginnings in a Wellington flat to a leading design and effects facility, uh, Weta Workshop undoubtedly on top of the world and has been for some time now. Well, the final Hobbit movie, though, is out next month, and that is the end of a long journey for the team. And the man behind the workshop needs no introduction. Sir Richard Taylor joins us now from the workshop. Sir Richard, thank you so much for giving us some time this morning. Um, is there a wee bit of sadness here? This is, uh, I think it's a 17-year relationship now between you guys and the Tolkien books. Uh, it's, 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 a, it's a big sort of line in the sand for you, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's, it's funny, actually. It is tinged with a bit of sadness. Uh, at the end of Lord of the Rings, there was incredible sadness. We never imagined we were going to go back into the world of Middle-earth again. But, uh, you know, with The Hobbit coming to a close, I think that we feel that we've done the, the journey well. And, uh, you know, you're given this legacy of work to present to the world, and we've, get, we've given it our absolute best, as has every department involved in these movies. And you... You feel that the custodianship has been handled as well as you could, and now you've sent it on its way. So, mixed feelings, but I think for the most part, pride and pleasure that it's all done well and uh, can go out to the world. Well, absolutely well-earned pride, uh, undoubtedly. Uh, it must, though, have been really hard. I mean, you, you, maybe there's a sense of relief also, that because to maintain that standard and to continue to improve on what you're doing every movie, there must have been a pressure which you guys were feeling. Yeah, the, there is an immense pressure, but that pressure is ultimately put on by yourselves. Mm. Uh, I, anyone can tackle any project, and it's all relative to your own self-discipline, I guess, how you tackle it. And at any time, you might release that uh, pressure a little bit by, by slackening off. But uh, the, the sense of dedication by every member of the crew that's been focused on these movies for so many years, well over a decade now, has been so significant that I don't think anyone's ever felt that it would be appropriate to lessen that effort. And uh, hopefully the results are seen in the films. Of course, uh, Peter Jackson leads by that, by that example. No one works harder than him. And uh, he's so focused on making this as good as it can be that uh, we, we simply just follow suit. Do you sometimes, I mentioned in the intro when, when you started, uh, you know, what is it, 24, 25 years ago in, in the Wellington, uh, in a Wellington apartment, do you still sometimes uh, think of the whole thing as a dream, the, the whole journey? You know, you've got a row of Academy Awards sitting there, you're producing world-class, uh, well, you're, you're pioneering in the film world still. Uh, is the whole thing just a, a bit of a dream to you? It's, uh, yeah, we, my wife and I now have been in business for 27 years, and as you say, it started off, it started off in an eight-foot square room, uh, and reflecting back on that sometimes, the dream-like nature of the journey, obviously it's, it's a, an equal mix sometimes of nightmares and dreams, because it's not all easy sailing, but, uh, but I still wake every morning uh, passionate about what I do, intent on getting to the workshop, opening this uh, Pandora's box of wonderment and delight and getting to hang out with my friends and colleagues for the day and just make more cool stuff. I, things surprisingly haven't changed that much from those early days. We're still in an industrial workshop. We're still getting our hands dirty. We're still making things for a living. And, uh, and that's a real delight. The fact yeah. that we get to do our hobby for a living is uh, pretty cool. And that passion comes through on the screen with every frame pretty much. Uh, now, Sir Richard, quickly before I lose you, I wanted to talk to you, because of course you're not hanging up, you're not hanging up the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the, I don't know what your tools are, uh, uh, the computer mouse, because uh, the Thunderbirds is the next big project. There is a concern amongst fun Thunderbird aficionados that you're doing away with our rather clunky puppets and strings to make it very, very zappy for the new, for the new generation. Pretty big challenge though. Yeah, look, if it was up to me, being the fanatical fan I am, I would, uh, I would have made the show with marionettes myself. But I've got to be uh, cognizant of the audience of today. You know, we've got to make the show for four- to eight-year-old boys and girls of the world today who've grown up on, uh, on much more complex and sophisticated uh, technology than what we grew up on, and it's required us, therefore... To, uh, to complement that with the way we're making the show. Of course, we're sticking with miniatures for the world construction, so hopefully we keep some of the beautiful aspects of the original show.
But uh, at its core, the uncelebrated heroism of the uh, Thunderbird boys stay core to our show, and uh, hopefully that will be the DNA that will bring it to a new generation. Yes, and hush you cynics. I, I'm sure it will be absolutely fantastic, much like everything you guys produce. So, Richard Taylor, thank you for your time this morning. Yeah, absolutely world class. Thank Is you very a... much for your interest. Oh, yeah, most interesting. He's so humble. Yeah, he, isn't he just? Mm. Uh, there's a pen character called Penelope, isn't there? Yes. I think that's my only Not memory. Yes, I remember something. Fabulous. Right, they're, they're all in love with her, are they? The attractive marionette you'll ever find. <laughs> okay. Sam's at Weta this morning. Mm. You with us? IP. The world. Yeah, I'm, I'm with us. Can you hear me? Yeah, yep, sorry. Can you hear me? Yep. Oh, you can. Oh, fantastic. I thought I forgot to turn my mic on. But no, IP is the, uh, is the word of the day around here. Uh, intellectual property. You walk through this place and um, we had to take a shortcut between the interview uh, just before and it was literally like, you can't look there, you can't look there, there's stuff that you can kind of uh, meander past but aren't allowed to film. Uh, we can film this stuff but I can't tell you what it is. It's absolutely remarkable once again but uh, we're not going to allude to what that's being used uh, for. Uh, Another thing, just before, oh my goodness, I got a little sneak taste of Thunderbirds. They've got the, um, the miniature sets, Jack. Is it Jack? Yeah, Jack. I wrote it on my hand, still couldn't remember. <laughs> uh, and they're absolutely beautiful for Thunderbirds. Um, we're not allowed to film those, obviously, because nothing has been released. But they were just sitting here before, and it was, it's, it's amazing stuff, oh, isn't absolutely it? Absolutely amazing. And that's what Antia's is working on now. Okay. We'll get to that. Uh, we'll, we'll get into the weather, though, uh, first and foremost, starting with the warning that is in Jake Downing. Apologies. I think I've even put the graphic incor incorrectly as well. Jake Downing. Um, where are we? We're at the Weta Cave Workshop Tour. So okay. it's a tour for um, visitors who want to see behind the scenes of what we do at Weta. And it really is behind the scenes, too, because, I mean, you're showing people stuff that you're not showing us. Yeah. And I'm upset about that, Jake. <laughs> Sorry. When they come through, they're not allowed to take pictures either, so there's no difference from you. Okay. <laughs> we do get a little sneak peek. What's going on here? We do. So this is Antia. She's working on um, trees for um, Thunderbirds miniatures, basically. Okay. Talk us through it. What, 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 how are you putting it together? Well, uh, I'm, I'm not the creative one, so Auntie is best to explain okay, that. Okay, I'll nip down there. All right. Talk us through it. Hi. So I use... From uh, Germany. <clears throat> yeah, from Germany. So I use wire, um, uh, florist wire, to create little branches. So I twist them, separate them, twist them again, till it ends up like a little tree like that. Okay, and what's going on the top? Just give us a little run through so we get a little insight into the movie so, so no one else will. Yeah, so we will cover it in a material we don't know yet. Oh, we have I to see figure out what is the best for it. We also are kind of trying to figure out what it's the best for it and then after that we will put a lot of little leaves on the, on the ends. Yeah. Uh, hence making a tree. This is chain mail, huge part of the Lord of the Rings. And I like this story you're telling me before I'll, I'll nip around here so that we can fit up on the stage. Someone lost a finger. Yeah, so uh, not quite, not quite. <laughs> so this is uh, real, real chain mail. So heavy. it's quite heavy, isn't it? Yeah. So a full suit of that would weigh about 25 kilos. So obviously actors didn't want to wear that for Lord of the Rings. So it used to be knitted to save the weight, but want, want something really realistic. So uh, Weta, with their Chinese partner, we came up with uh, some really realistic sanding, Looking, feeling, but half the weight. Absolutely. And so, someone had to make it. Make it. So for Lord of the piece Rings. Piece by piece. Piece by piece. And they piece. lost a finger, Jack. No, they didn't lose a finger. <laughs> Be excited. So they had, they had tubes which they cut up, basically poly, um, plumbing tubes, which they cut up into a lot of, lots of little pieces. They yeah. then painted, and then they hand put together and hand connected together. And they were doing that. Two people for three years for all the uh, chain mail for Lord of the Rings. And he was putting so much together, their fingers turned to pulp, and they actually lost their uh, fingerprints, <laughs> not fingers. Okay, <laughs> maybe a little exaggeration. But there's more to come. One more cross. See you at 8.30. Three I'm fascinated. years. I'm fascinated because I know that uh, Richard Taylor, or Weta, has, loves 3D printing. It's mm. been a big part of their mm. the sort of next step. So, Sam, surely they could just print now all that chain mail out of plastic. It'd be done in ten... Yep. Don't tell the people You're who spent three years doing it, <laughs> yeah. but they could do it in about 20 yeah. years. <laughs> No, you're actually right. They're actually changing the technique on it, so it's no longer done by hand. How is it done? Can you guys... Is, is it printed now, or is it cast? It's cast, isn't it? Right. By mould, yeah. yeah. So people aren't losing their fingers anymore. It's okay. okay. Hopefully they've got new jobs <laughs> then for the two people who spent three years doing that. Uh Zip straight down to you, because you've got lots of exciting things to show us. One thing... Which, uh, before, I know you've set this up nicely, and I'm now ruining this. But the thing which amazes oh, yeah, me about right. this place is how do they possibly... They have to keep everything. What's the storeroom like? You wouldn't want to th ever throw anything away, would you? Is that you? 
No, that's not me, mate. You, they wouldn't trust me with a, a big sword. No, you're right. It's Peter Lyon, he's from the armory. <laughs> but no, <laughs> uh, that's exactly it. This place is just absolutely littered with film history. It is just amazing. It's not only film history. Uh, well, there's a bit of film history this way, but there's the new bits and bobs as well. Um, and the, the intellectual property that I'm talking about. We can't even, look, the camera just stays. If I walk this way, the camera just stays. It doesn't matter what I do, I, the camera won't go that way because all this stuff that way is out of bounds. Uh, but it's just such a neat place to be this morning, where to workshop. And it's a live working environment. As you can see, the armory cranking. But um, it, it's that kind of morning, uh, at the time of the morning, where all the workers are starting to come in and starting to get into their daily jobs. And, and their daily jobs is creating these most amazing, fascinating, uh, wonderfully detailed um, piece of future film history. It is a really, really cool place. And you know what? You can come and have a good look through it as well. It costs $24. Uh, you just turn up at the door and you can buy memorabilia. It's just a really cool place. Anyway, we're going to go in there. We're going to speak to Mr. Peter Lyon because, um, well, he's quite remarkable. Uh, let's get into the weather, though, for the last time this morning, starting in the regions in the... Mr. Peter Lyon, welcome to breakfast. Yeah, thank you. From the armory. Now, the really interesting thing about this place, and, and the thing I've noticed, is the sheer, well, the detail, the quality and the stuff that they produce. Um, you've spent a long time making films for Lord, uh, swords and armory for Lord of the Rings, mm -hmm. Hobbit yep. as well, yep. but now you've got a new kind of claim to fame as well. Yeah, um, I'm, as far as I know, the only living swordsmith who's got swords in the Royal Armouries in Leeds. So that is, uh, can you explain what that is? Okay, um, the Royal Armouries used to be in the Tower of London. Part of it is still there, but the collection got too big. And uh, this is stuff going back 500 plus years. Yeah, right. And so they built a special um, exhibition place in Leeds so that they could show it off properly and could give it more access for the general public. The only living man to have a sword yes. in there. Yep. And it'll probably live longer than you, won't it, mate? Um, yeah, well, if they're looked after, they'll be still there in 500 years and I'll be long gone. Very good. And just quickly, what are you fashioning for us? Um, was that the correct term, fashioning? Yep. Uh, this is the start of an Orkrist sword. Yep. So it's a very big lump of steel currently. Yep. It's been cut out of a, a plate of spring steel, which is actually really close in composition to the original steels too, yeah, sure. ironically. Um, from this point, there's a lot of grinding. Then I heat treat it to get that springiness and get a nice hard edge so that it can be sharpened if um, collectors want that. And after that I finish it, then of course there's all the parts for the hilt that have to be finished. Yeah, beautiful. And I, uh, the thing I really like about this, and the reason why we chose to come in here is because, you know, as, as things change, as computer generation becomes a bigger part of it, as 3D printing is used more and more, it's really nice to see that some of the old-fashioned techniques are still uh, a, a massive part in, into the production of these most amazing films. It's been a lovely yeah. morning, and I do recommend that you come into the Weta Weta workshops uh, and have a good look around. Yeah, real craft. No, it's been a real pleasure to have a look around. Thanks for that. Thanks for that, Sam. Mm. Uh, we'll